Hey, y'all, Gary here with Tennessee Stands. Uh, hey, I know you people in Shelby County have been getting a little frustrated uh, with me not addressing the mask mandates in Shelby County, but talking about uh, them everywhere else uh, in Nashville and in schools across the state. There's a reason for that. And so, as promised, I'm going to do that uh, in this video. You're sort of a special case, and uh, I don't mean that in a bad way. Uh, but look, you are under currently Health Directive 26, um, which is a, an order by your county health officer uh, that has instituted a mask mandate in Shelby County, which covers schools, indoor facilities, businesses, the whole nine yards. And um, so let's talk about why that happened in Shelby County and how in the world that happened. Um, because as you remember last year, it, uh, it required executive orders from the governor, right? Remember that? It required the governor to issue executive orders to hand those powers down to, uh, unconstitutional, albeit, but to hand those powers down to county mayors and to the six autonomous health departments around the state. And currently, an executive order like that is not in effect. So how in the world... Uh, is the health department in Shelby County issuing a mask order? Well, let me take you to SB 858 that passed this year. If you remember, uh, this was the bill that the governor amended in April uh, to quote-unquote ban vaccine passports, which, of course, of course we know uh, did, uh, what do we like to say here at Tennessee Stands, a bill that does almost nothing. Uh, it didn't ban vaccine passports. It just banned the government from requiring a business to require a vaccine passport. But businesses can use them. And of course, we know that that's happening. Uh, Bridgestone Arena, uh, the FedEx Center down in Memphis and other venues all across the state are requiring proof of vaccination uh, to gain entry and to access goods and services. And that should not be happening here in, ten in Tennessee, but it is. But this was the bill that they used to do that. However, what we did not know is what they slipped into that bill. So, um, you know, our eyes were on what was happening with the vaccine passport. So this was the original bill uh, run by one of our absolute favorite legislators, uh, Senator Janice Bowling, an absolute champion uh, for liberty and for medical freedom here in Tennessee. And in her original bill... Uh, here in Section 5, she was amending Section 68-2-609 uh, of the Code uh, to bring some definition to the word quarantine. Now, let's take a look at this uh, law here really quickly. So, this is what 68-2-609 does. It defines the orders of a county health officer. Now, bear with me for a moment. This can be a little confusing, but, but this, is, this is confusing to many uh, in how our code deals with health departments and boards of health. And So there's a difference between a county health department and a county board of health, and there's a difference between a county health director and a county health officer, okay? And not all counties have these things. In fact, Shelby County does not have a board of health. It only has a health department. It also has a health director. Shelby County also has a county health officer. Okay, County health directors cannot create rules uh, or regulations in their county. They, must, uh, they only execute the regulations set by the state health department. But a county health officer is completely different. Um, this statute has been on the books since 1985, and you can see it was just amended this year after this session in 2021. Since 1985, this statute only had three sections to it. So county health officers could quarantine uh, in the case of an epidemic. Uh, they could close public establishments. Uh, for unsanitary conditions, which, by the way, I sort of appreciate that service if uh, restaurants sort of being nasty behind the scenes. I'd kind of like to know about it. I appreciate those places being cited and shut down. 
uh, and they can close uh, any public establishment um, according to the law when necessary. So that, that was the limitation of the county health officer's powers before 2021. So you were told, and, uh, and, and we were told, and the bill sponsors were told, by the, by the way, this amendment, um, let me put this back on the screen. So this amendment to the bill, SB 858, whenever they were amending this bill to add the vaccine passport language in, this is the amendment they ran, which rewrote the entire bill. It's, I need to be clear, this is something that's important that you understand. This was this language, this bill language, came from the governor's office. Let me, re, let me restate that. Everything I'm about to show you, this bill language, this amendment, was an amendment that came directly from Governor Bill Lee from the governor's office. Here's what they told us it was doing. In section one, oh, we're... We're removing the powers of the, of the county boards of health, and we're making them um, an advisory role. They're, they're not going to have powers to create rules anymore. Um, you know, all of these boards of health, like in Knox County, that were citing businesses and limiting them to 50% capacity and closing businesses down, we're not going to allow health departments to do that anymore. Uh, health uh, Boards of health. We're, we're going to make boards of health just an advisory role they can't make rules. They can't create penalty. That was great. We all celebrated that. And then the governor added his vaccine passport language. But while we were cheering that we were limiting the authority of county boards of health, and while they were faking us out that they were going to ban vaccine passports in Tennessee, here's what the governor's office added. They removed Janice's original language to define the word quarantine in the statute uh, in 68.2609, and look what they did. They pulled all of that out and added their own little section four. And what they did was they added this number four to the law. So let me take you to the current law. This little nugget right here. Rules and regulations as are necessary or appropriate to, pro to protect the general health and safety of the county. So what they did was instead of the county health officer being able to do just these three things, they added number four, which means now for the first time, the county health, this, this is a very broad, broad and vague authority. They can just create rules and regulations as long as they deem it for the general health. So my God, it doesn't matter what type of rule they want to make. They can make any sort of rule they want to as long as it's to protect the public health. I mean, incredibly broad language. So whenever uh, they instituted uh, Health Directive 24, which was the mask mandate specific for schools in Shelby County, I wrote a letter to the health director, the health officer, the county mayor, the director of schools, and the county law director, asking them, where in the world did you find the authority to do this? Because I can find nowhere in law that this authority exists. Um, because this law that I just showed you actually had not been updated on the website yet for Tennessee Code Annotated, and I had missed it. And so thankfully, Miss Marlene, Marlene Iverson, she's the uh, county attorney for Shelby County, uh, very nice lady, she called me back. And she confirmed that they were issuing these directives under this newfound authority. And so let me take you to this directive. And I'll sort of close up with this. I want you to see something. When you go to Shelby County's um, health department website and you look at health, these health orders, so let's look at the current one, Health Order 26, it says, you know, state of emergency by, by the county mayor or whatever, but it's important to know this health order is not being issued under the authority of the county mayor or the health director. It's being issued under the authority of this guy right here, and that's why he's listed on this, on this form. Bruce Randolph, MD, Shelby County Health Officer. If they didn't have this guy's name on the health order, this health order would be completely illegitimate, which constitutionally I feel like it is anyway. But the point is is that in 2021, 
our General Assembly passed a bill with language that came directly from the governor's office that sort of just slid underneath everybody's radar that a statute that hadn't been touched since 1985, and all of a sudden where we're taking rulemaking power away from county boards of health, which didn't matter, by the way, in Shelby County, because as some of you may or may not know, Shelby County doesn't even have a county board of health. So you weren't under threat from your county board of health to begin with because you don't have one. You have a health department, and your health department has no lawful authority to create rules. Only the state health department has authority to create rules, unless the governor issues that authority by executive order, which he has not. So the only reason that Shelby County, you are under a health directive right now that says that you have to wear masks is because, per the governor's language, in a bill passed by the General Assembly this past session, they have greatly expanded broadly expanded the powers of this man, Bruce Randolph, who now under Directive uh, 26 is saying that you have to be masked. And, and I just want to point out a few things in this executive order, uh, in this uh, health directive, sorry. It's interesting that when you pull this up, um, they cite, let's see here, I'm looking for this, uh, do do because it's interesting how they... Uh, talk about businesses they cite that it's a it's a partnership yeah check this out the wearing of face masks and coverings department values the department values its business partners in the fight to end the pandemic for this reason the department asked that businesses continue this partnership now businesses in shelby county do you feel like you're in partnership with your local government and Shelby County? Does this, do these directives that are forcing you to police people in your own place of business and enforce these nonsensical mandates in Shelby County, does this feel like a, a partnership between business and the health department and the county mayor's office? Certainly not. This is, this is no partnership. What a bunch of hogwash. Uh, lastly, they are already scared. I saw this in here earlier. Uh, let me see if I can find it. They are already scaring folks with the possibility of these OSHA regulations coming down. I mean, it's amazing they even have that in this health directive since, uh, yeah, here it is. So in this health directive in Shelby County, they're already mentioning uh, the possibility of the, the, the incredible overreach of the federal government where Biden has requested that OSHA create a regulation that would require all employers with over 100 employees to mandate the vaccine to their employees. That hasn't even happened yet. I mean, Biden has made that request, but OSHA has not even issued that regulation. And the Shelby County Health Department is already, it's almost like they're excited about it. Like, guys, it's coming. It's coming. The federal government is going to overreach in our state. And by federal regulations, they're going to force us to mandate the shot. We're, we're ready to comply. It, it's horrible. It, it doesn't feel like Tennessee. But to be frank, Williamson County and Nashville almost don't feel like Tennessee anymore with this governor who continues to lead us by executive orders and a general assembly who might be coming into general session, actually, to do something about the tyranny that we're under. So we'll see what happens. But um, Shelby County, you guys are in a mess, but this is why. You are currently under a, a not rules from your school board or any of that. This is expanded authority that's been handed down to your county health officer, Bruce Randolph, uh, directly from the governor's office, by the way. Language put into law, drafted by the legal team that works directly for Governor Bill Lee. Thank you, Governor.